Hello, uh, welcome back to class now. Okay, we have had just a break. Okay, so I think that uh, after about 10 to 15 minutes break, uh, you should become uh, fresh now, okay, and have uh, quite strong concentration, okay, on the lecture. We're just going to uh, be uh, lasting for about uh, 1.5 hours, okay. So this is the second part of the lecture today. Okay, before the break, we have talk about the effectiveness of the integration of an intention, remember. Okay, I'm going to uh, bring your memory back, okay. So, so we have just talked about, you know, the, the, the two modes of uh, communications in Thai law, uh, as with the laws of uh, some countries, okay. Uh, in this country, in Thailand, we have indeed uh, classified the uh, modes of communications into two modes. Okay, the first one is instantaneous mode of communication, and the second one is a non instantaneous mode of communication. Okay, and I have explained to you already that the reason why the law uh, distinguishes modes of communication into two modes uh, is because, okay, in each mode, at the time at which uh, the declaration of an intention becomes effective uh, is different, okay, the, uh, the, in the, the uh, uh, many countries. In fact, there are the different theories, remember, we have talked about, you know, the expression theory, the dispatch theory, uh, and also, you know, the receipt theory and perceiving theory, okay, so the, these theories are adopted, okay, the, in the laws of many countries in the different scenarios, uh, in Thailand, okay, with respect to the communications which is made in a non in in an instant mode, then a Thai law according to Second One Six Z of the Civil and Commercial Code provides that uh, in this case a declaration of an intention, okay, made in an instant mode will be effective when it becomes known to the other party, okay. The, this is uh, what is said in Second One Six Eight. Okay, the declaration of intention made to a person who is in his presence is deemed to be effective with the as from the time at which okay the, the, the receiver of the intention has the knowledge thereof. Okay, this means that uh, in the this mode of communication in an instantaneous mode of communication. Okay, the, if A uh, declares an intention to B, the declaration uh, declared by A will take effect as soon as B has the knowledge, okay, as soon as B has the knowledge of that declaration of the intention, okay, put simply, when the intention declared by A becomes known to B, okay, so, and uh, with respect to the, the Second mode of communication, i.e. a non instantaneous mode of communication. In this case, according to Second 169 of the Civil and Capture Code of Thailand, the declaration of the intention in this mode will be effective when it reaches the other party. Okay, the law uses the word reach. The reach here means what? When the message, when the declaration of the intention reaches the other party that means that when it is received by the other party so uh, with respect to a non instance mode of communication Thai law adopts the which rule uh, uh, adopt the, the you know receipt rule here okay so this is what we have dealt with in the first half of the lecture and we have also seen that with respect to an instance mode of communication Okay, the law covers two situations, the situation where the two parties are in each other's presence, okay, and the situations where the two parties are not strictly in each other's presence, but they are in the position to have immediate feedbacks, okay, so if you look at second 168, okay, the second part, the second sentence of second 168 uh, uh, talks about what, uh, it speaks of the communication by the telephone, or by any other device or any the uh, the communication the, in a similar nature that's made in the nature in the nature similar to the telephone okay so it covers uh, as i have uh, brought to attention okay 
uh, the, the the creation of an intention in and the incentives mode also cover this, you know the use of telephone and the use of uh, real time applications in the modern in the, in our modern days. Okay, the, including the VoIP voice server, the Internet Protocol, and uh, including on say you know the use of video conference or video call. Okay, or the, you know, the live call, Facebook call, something like that. Okay, so uh, this is what we have on sale scene. Uh, but uh, if this, we use a non-real-time application, okay, so uh, the, if we use a non-real-time application like uh, using the telex, fax, or email, okay, these uh, devices, okay, these technologies uh, do not function, the, you know, the, the in uh, a real-time mode. Okay, the, the, they function in a non-real-time mode so that, you know, the two parties are not in the position to have immediate feedback. So, if a person uh, makes use of, you know, telex, fax or email uh, for the communicate, for the communication, right, if A declares an intention, to, if A declare, uh, declares an intention to B, okay, such declaration of an intention will be effective when it is what? Even that, I mean, the communication, the making use of this device, okay, the non-real-time application or non-real-time device is regarded by law as what? Well, as, you know, the, a declaration of an intention in a non instance mode so that it will become effective when it, is, when it reaches the other party or when it is received by the other party. Okay, that this is uh, according to section one, uh, you know, one uh, six nine. Remember, and uh, I have in the first half of my lecture brought to your attention also that okay, with respect to communication through network, okay, so the, like the email, okay, it is not the same thing as communication by post, okay. The, so the law will have to work out. The rule for the determination of what? Determination of the term of receipt. Okay, so that we have in Thailand, at, as with in other countries, okay, in many countries, right, we have the specific law called the Electronic Transactions Act, okay, 2001, or the ETA, okay, the, which, sets, uh, which sets forth many rules, including the rule for the determination of the term of receipt, and we have seen that, okay, the, this uh, law, okay, the, uh, says that uh, for, an, uh, for a data message or for an electronic message to be received by the NRC, it will have to enter an information system of the NRC, okay, a message, a data message sent by A, okay, the to B uh, will be received by B once it is what is what what it centers B's in for main system. Okay, so we have seen also how to interpret the verb in for main system. Okay, so with respect to an email communication, okay, a message as sent by the sender or the or orig originator, okay, will have to be stored in. The mail server of the address first, you know, before it is, you know, downloaded uh, by the address C when the address C is connected to the internet, and the address C just download the message from the server that onto his PC. Okay, the, uh, in this case, uh, can we just interpret that, you know, the, the once the message is sent by the sender, okay, reaches uh, the, the mail server of the, the address C. It has, it, it has, you know, the entered an information system of the RSC, the word information system, as used in the, you know, the, in the section 23 of the ETA of this country, okay, refers to which computer between the server and the client, okay, and I have told you uh, that, you know, that the pre prevailing view nowadays is that, okay, the word, Informative system as used in the section 23 of Thailand's Electronic Transaction Act 2001 uh, should refer to the mail server. Okay, so if it is, what is sent by A, 
uh, is an acceptance. That means that once the acceptance reached, okay, reaches when the, uh, the, the recipients or the addressee's mail box, which is stored at, uh, you know, re the recipient's ISP, it enters the addressee's information system, okay, to so that the acceptance as sent by the sender here is duly received by the uh, addressee, okay, that's so if A sends an acceptance by email to B, okay, once A's acceptance uh, enters uh, B's uh, mail server here, okay, even though at that time B is not yet connected to the internet, right, uh, an acceptance, the acceptance sent by A is duly received by B as soon as it enters B's mailbox, okay, so that means that the contract is formed at this point of time, okay? And uh, remember, we are going to have a look at this one at the, at the quest length, okay? The, in full detail, okay, when we uh, have a separate session on e-commerce law in this country or electronic transactions law in the town, okay? So we're going to have uh, more details about this one, okay? And I have also told you that if you are interested, okay, in the, this topic, then you are welcome to consult my textbook here, okay, the, the, the law on electronic the transactions in the, in the digital age, okay, so now we are going to continue, okay, the, our lecture uh, on the effectiveness of the declaration of an intention, okay, continue from what, we are going to continue from our previous lecture, the lecture in the first half, okay, or uh, in the first half today, okay. And now the when a when the a, when the declaration of an intention, okay, takes uh, sorry when somebody has declared his intention, right. Uh, the question arises as to whether or not he can put an end to that uh, declaration of an intention, okay. Whether or not he can just make that declaration of an, of the intention ineffective. Okay, the answer is yes, okay, that he can do so, he can just put an end to the declaration of his intention by way of revoking that declaration of an intention, okay, how to revoke, how to revoke the declaration of in an intention, okay, once an intention has been declared, it can be revoked, okay, so the, the civil and coverage code of Thailand uh, contains also a rule, okay, a rule for the revocation of the declaration of an intention, okay, so it can be revoked, okay, so the, the rule about this is, is this, normally, okay, when we revoke the declaration of an intention, okay, normally it is the case of non, it is the case of a non intentional communication, okay, because when two parties, when A and B are in each other's presence, it is obvious that, okay, when the, the parties are in each other's presence or when the parties are in the position to have an immediate feedback as if they were in each other's presence, once A says something to B, once A declares any intention to B, okay, B is or they, B is in A's presence or B is in the position to have immediate feedbacks, in this case A can revoke Okay, here's the correction of the intention right away. Uh, a can just revoke the correction of an intention immediately. So it is quite clear that in the case of, you know, in the case of, you know, the, and the status mode of communication, okay, revocation is, you know, is permissible all the time, okay, right away, in fact, by nature. The nature of the, the communication in an instantaneous mode allows immediate revocation that is clear, okay? So if you look at if you look at the rule contained in the civil and commercial code with respect to revocation, okay, of the declaration of an intention, okay, it speaks of the case where the two party are not in its presence, okay. We have the rule. Uh, in section one signal, okay, one signal, okay, in the in, in the section one signal here, which we have to look at. Remember, we look at the first part of one signal, which sets the rule that 
okay, the, for a declaration of the intention to, in the, you know, the, in, in the, a non existent mode, it will become effective when it reaches the other party, remember. When it reaches the other party, okay, when it reaches the other party, or uh, in other words, when it is received by the other party, the word reach here, that means being received by the other party, remember, okay, we have dealt with this one. But if you look at the second part, which is in the second sentence, okay, of section 169, paragraph 1, you can see that the law speaks of revocation of the declaration of an intention, okay? Paragraph, uh, paragraph 1 in the second sentence provides as follows. But if revocation reaches the receiver of such intention before or at the same time as the, the declaration of such intention reaches the receiver thereof, then the declaration of such intention becomes ineffective, meaning what? Meaning that once, let's say that I am A, you are B, okay, I have declared my intention to you, okay, let's say that I have made my offer to sell my car to you, okay, I declare my intention to sell my car to you, and in this case, we are not in each other's presence, we are far apart. I am now in Bangkok while you are now in Chiang Mai. Okay, I may send a letter to you making an offer to sell you my own car. Okay, so this is the offer from me. The offer in this test takes effect when it reaches you. Okay, once I have made this offer, okay, once I declare my intention to make an offer to sell you a car, my car, right. I can just change my mind if I want to revoke, if I want to revoke this offer, this declaration of the intention, okay, I can just do so, but I need to make sure that the revocation, okay, the revocation reaches the other party, my revocation reach, reaches you, okay, before or at the same time as the declaration of, you know, the original intention. Okay, so, you know, if I want to put an end to the original intention, I want to make my mind, I want to just change my mind, okay? I do not want to make an offer to sell my car to you anymore, okay? When I have made, uh, you know, when I have declared my intention, okay, to sell my car to you, I can just change my mind by revoking the original intention, but I need to make sure that the new, I mean, the revocation of this intention, the revocation of the original intention, okay, that reaches the other party before or at the same time as the, the, the declaration of the original, in, original intention, okay. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at you know, the example. Again, the, the law say that re re revocation can be made Okay, that in order to put an end to the declaration of the intention, which has been met, right, but the re revocation will have to reach the other party before or at the same time as the declaration of the original intention, okay, uh, before or at the same time as the de declaration of the original intention reaches the receiver of the intention, okay. Have a look at this example here. Let's suppose that, okay, let's suppose that uh, A and B, they exchange communication, okay, they exchange messages, and uh, in this case, let's suppose that on the 8th of July 2020, look at the date, okay, in order to say the sequence very well, okay, in this case, on the 8th of July, what happened to my pen, it seems that, that my pen does not write right now, Okay, on the 8th of July, maybe I have not charged my pin. Okay, so have a look at. Oh my god, my battery is running out because, you know, I just uh, forgot to put, you know, the, you know, I forgot to, you know, the, the put the, the main supply to my computer. So that means previously my computer has just run on its own battery. Okay, so battery is running out. So now I have just, you know, 
a plot. You know, the, the I just mean the use the main power now. All right, very good. So I think that my computer is not dying. Okay, uh, look at this case on the 8th of July. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, now my the pen works. On the 8th of July, write the A that wrote a letter to B. Okay, let's say that B has, now that we are going to look at this diagram, B has indeed made an offer to sell, uh, to sell what? To sell B's car. Okay, let's say that B had, you know, a Mercedes-Benz and B has made an offer to sell this car to A and now A wanted to just make an acceptance. B, sorry, A, A, B has made an offer to sell his Mercedes car to A and now A wanted to, uh, you know, to make an acceptance. B, uh, A want to accept B's uh, offer. Let's suppose that on the 8th of July 2020, B wrote a letter to A okay, in order to accept B's offer. Okay, A wrote a letter to B in order to accept B's offer to sell the car, the Mercedes car. Okay, uh, B has pre previously made an offer to sell his Mercedes car to A at the price of 2 million baht and A wanted to just accept that offer okay, at this price so A just posted this letter okay, he resorted to a legal mail delivery service you know, he did not use I mean, that A special service like EMS or next day, uh, you know, next day the posted service, something like that, okay to make sure that the letter would arrive in the party very very fast in this case a just use just a local mail service okay the, it might take maybe two or three days two to three days for the letters from a to reach b so when a posted his letter a did not use any you know any the express mail service he used just local mail delivery service so that the letter from A would take about maybe even two to three days in order to reach B. Okay, so this I mean uh, this is the eighth of July two thousand twenty when A has when A posted this letter to B after just an hour. And A regretted that acceptance. Okay, so A wanted to change his mind. Okay, he changed his mind, he did not want to buy the car anymore. Right, uh, so he could do this, and he did so. He just wrote a letter, okay, that to tell me that no, he did not want to buy the car anymore, okay. This is his intention to just cancel the acceptance. Okay, so in this case, you can see that A has already sent this letter. Right, which would be expected to which would be expected to reach B in a few days' time because it was, you know, posted okay the, through the Lekoba Mail service, the Lekoba Mail delivery service. Okay, so on the same day, just one hour later, A changed his mind. He post he posted a new letter in order to rework the original. Uh, intention okay so when he declared his intention on the 8th of july 2020 okay the intention to accept the software right he then uh, in our letter he then just changed his mind he wanted to revoke the original you know intention the original intention is what is the intention to accept the offer right so in this case the law says what? If we go back to the law, the law says, yes, a person may revoke his declaration of intention, okay? But that person needs to make sure that the revocation, okay, the revocation reaches the, the other party before or at the same time of the declaration of the original intention, okay, reaches the other party. So, in this case, if he wants it to revoke the original intention, i.e. the acceptance, okay, 
he would have to make sure that you know the letter which he would force to B would reach B before the original lecture or at the same time okay as the original lecture reach the other party okay so given that the original lecture okay was sent by what was sent by you know we had a legal mail delivery service which would arrive uh, B okay the in a few days time so in order to revoke his original uh, 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 acceptance or the declaration of the intention, okay, he would be, he would have to be forced, he would have to make sure that the new lecture reached B before the first lecture, or at least at the same time, not at least, at the letters, okay, at the letters at the same time as the time when the original lecture reached B. Okay, so that's why, you know, in this case, B, oh, sorry, A, would have to send this second lecture by, I mean, a faster service, okay. Uh, so in this case, A does send the, the second lecture by EMS, which would reach the, the other party, I mean, next, the next day, okay. So in this case, let's suppose that, that on the next day, on the 9th of July 2020, okay, the EMS lecture, the EMS lecture, uh, sent by A to B, uh, and which was which was intended to cancel the first lecture, reached B on the on the this day, the 9th of July 2020. In this case, the revocation, the revocation. Remember, here you know the the, the second lecture, the second lecture was the re revocation of the first lecture. The second lecture was the re revocation of the original the original declaration of the intention made by A, remember. So in this case, on the 9th of July 2020, the, re the revocation okay, of the original intention reached the other party. Okay, and the first lecture, the original intention had not reached B yet because it would take two or three days. Okay, so in this case, why? Right. Simply because, you know, the, the second lecture, the revocation reaches, the revocation reached B before the declaration of the first intention reached B. So in this case, the revocation would be the effective so that the first, the, the original intention just cease to be effective, okay? So the original intention here became ineffective. So let's suppose that on the 10th of July 2020, the first letter which was sent by, you know, Lekola Mail Delivery Service, Rich B, in this case, would the first letter become effective? Would the first letter, okay, which constitute what? Which constitute an acceptance, okay? become effective? The answer is no. Because the first declaration, okay, the declaration of the original intention ceased to be effective because of the revocation. The revocation, okay, which was made later became effective and then it just put an end to the, the original intention. Right, so the, this is, you know, the, what happened in this case. Again, on the 8th of July, Okay, B sent this letter went through, you know, the Lekola Mail Delivery Service, which was reached B. A just posted this letter through, you know, Lekola Mail Delivery Service, uh, which would reach B just in a few days' time. Okay, and uh, the letter on the 8th of July was an acceptance. Just on the same day, just one hour later, okay, the a changed his mind. He wanted to revoke the acceptance which had been sent. So in this case, he used what? He used an uh, EMS service. The EMS service here, which would be faster than the Lekola Mail Delivery Service. So the second letter, which you know, that was intended to revoke the first letter, 
which was intended to revoke the original intention, okay, just reached B, okay, on the next day, so on the 9th of July 2020, the second letter, which was sent by EMS, uh, by the email service here, reach B, that's mean that the revocation reached the other party before the original intention, okay? So in this case, the revocation, which was made, you know, the, which was made, became effective and therefore put an end to the first or the original intention, okay? So in this case, the acceptance which was made by A in the first place ceased to be effective because the revocation, revocation reached the other party before the original, original uh, intention. Okay, so this is I mean, what is the rule in the section one six nine paragraph one in the later part in the second in the second sentence of uh, section one six nine paragraph one. Again, in order for you to understand this uh, very well, we have a have a read I mean, the, of uh, the uh, second uh, sentence of this provision again, okay? But if revocation reaches the receiver of such intention before or at the same time as the declaration of such intention reaches the receiver, okay, then the de declaration of such intention becomes ineffective. I hope that you the uh, have uh, now a, re a very clear picture of the rule, okay, contained in the, this uh, section 169, paragraph 1, with respect to the re revocation, okay, of the de declaration of an intention, okay, so, fine. Now, what we are going to talk about next is this, okay, once the, the intent, once an intention has been de declared by a party, okay, what happened, you know, when the, you know, when the, the, when the person who has made the declaration of the intention dies, okay, or uh, the, that person does not die, but he is adjudged by the court as an incompetent person or a quasi-incompetent person. Okay, the put simply, after, you know, a person has made a declaration of the intention, okay, uh, does his death, does his subsequent death, okay, or his being a judge as an incompetent person or as a quasi incompetent person, okay, the, have any effect on the intention which he has been, which, ha we, he, which he has declared? In this case, we have to refer to the rule contained in section 169 paragraph 2 section 169 paragraph 2 okay the speaks of the effect the legal effect of the death or of the judicial adjudication of incompetence or quasi incompetence of the person who has declared an intention okay the, so have a look at you know what is provided in section 169 paragraph 2 okay it provides as follows. Okay. Uh, the declaration of an intention which has been sent shall not be impaired even though subsequent to the declaration of such intention the declarer uh, dies or is adjudged as an incompetent or as, a, as an incompetent person or a or so in competent person. So what is what is meant by this is that when a person has declared his intention, okay, even though after the dec the declaration of that intention that he dies, or he does not die, he is still he is still alive, but he is judged by the court as an incompetent person or as a quasi incompetent person then the declaration of the intention which he has met does not have does not does not you know does not what does not the lose is effect okay it, it, it is still effective right the death the death or the adjudication okay uh, 
the education of incompetence or quasi incompetence does not have any effect on the declaration of the intention which has been made before his death or before his being adjudged by the court as a an incompetent person or a quasi incompetent person. Okay, so it is I mean, something that's not very complicated. Okay, so it is something indeed very very straightforward. But if I have made uh, my my offer to sell the car to you, okay. Uh, let's say that I have posted my lecture, okay, informing you that okay I want to sell my Civic, my Honda Civic car to you. In this case, if I just mix, if I just declare the an intention to in uh, by way of the you know the by way of the lecture like this, it is an intention made in what? It is a it is the declaration of an intention. Made in a non instance mode. So that, remember, according to section 169, it will be effective when it reaches the other party, or in other words, when it is received by the other party. Let's support that. You know, uh, let's support that. After that, after I have, you know, after I have made, you know, the, the declaration of this intention, I just passed away. Okay, in this case, my you know my offer, my declaration of the intention is still effective. It does not lose any little effect. Okay, by or, or on the ground or by reason of on the ground of my death, right? Even though you know, even though I die, after I just I mean to send you send a letter to you, my offer is still there. My offer is effective once it is received by you. Okay, so this is what is meant by you know section one the six nine paragraph two. Right. Now we have look at Thai laws. We have the suit I have that and you have now I mean the you now have you know the good understanding of you know the, the uh, legal the doctrines in Thai law with res with respect to effectiveness of the aggression of any tension okay for the purpose of making a juristic act right now uh, we are going to have a look at you know the positions in english law for the purpose of comparison remember i try to give you, you know, a comparative a comparative account of english law uh, you know the now that we uh, need is much felt for us to understand you know to understand the english law as well for the purpose of comparison as I have uh, told you, I mean, uh, many times. Now, you know, the, when, you, when one day when you leave this law school, when you, uh, you know, finish your study here from this law school, you may enter, you know, the you may enter a law firm, and you may have a lot of opportunities of, you know, the, uh, of what of drafting contracts or reviewing contracts. Okay, that. The contracts which are written in the English language, most contracts which are written in the English language, are drafted by those who are trained, you know, in common law jurisdictions. Okay, and they try to just put in put in the contract the common law concepts. So if you understand, you know, common law doctrines uh, in contract law very well, it will be very very useful for you. It will be of use uh, in that you're, you know, drafting the contract or in your reviewing the contracts. Okay, you will understand terms and conditions uh, in those contracts much better. Okay, that's why I try to just I mean to give you a brief account of English law as well in comparison with Thai laws. Okay, so with respect to the term of effectiveness of a communication. Okay. English law also, you know, that has the rule about this. The default rule is the receipt rule. Remember, in the UK, in the in the England, okay, they do not have the concept of juristic acts. So these rules, these doctrines, are rules or doctrines in contract law, not in the law on juristic acts. Okay, so English law. English law has the rules about effectiveness of an acceptance. Okay, if you make acceptance, then you will have to communicate your acceptance to the other party. You may wonder why you know 
why don't they have the rule for an offer as well? A contract is made by an offer, by an offer and a, an acceptance, okay? Uh, English law takes the position that, well, right, uh, we are concerned with acceptance because, I mean, the, the contract is uh, formed as soon as the acceptance takes effect. Right. So we, in, in the England, okay, uh, they, they, they just I mean that they think this way. We will have the rule about effectiveness or term of effectiveness of, you know, of an acceptance. And the rule is that an acceptance will take effect when it is received by the other party. The default rule is the receipt rule. The default rule, which apply to both, you know, the uh, instantaneous mode of communication and non-instantaneous mode of communication. Okay, the rule, the default rule is the receipt rule, and again, this rule applies to both modes. Uh, you know, the be it, you know, the and in this instantaneous mode. Uh, or be it a non instantaneous mode, okay? So when a person just makes an acceptance, that person will have to communicate that acceptance to the other party. And the law says that, I mean, English law on this point, it is in the form of case law. Okay, not, they don't have section one, two, three, four, okay? They have case law. The law which has been established by courts through decisions of courts. Okay, so the, the case according to case law, English case law, an acceptance is considered as having been communicated to the other party when it is received by the other party. So the default rule is the receipt rule. An acceptance is communicated to the other party when it is received by the other party. The other party, of course, is the upper rule. But there is one exception. Even though the default rule is the receipt rule, but there is one exception, which applies only to the case where a communication is made by post, you know, by the Royal Mail Service, okay, by post, by letters. Okay, in the case of a communication made by purse, if anyone, if a person makes an acceptance, okay, make an acceptance, and that person just send the acceptance by purse, in that case, that acceptance will be regarded by law as being communicated to the other party when it is posted. When it, it once it is posted, okay. So in this case, the rule it is not the receipt rule, but it is the postal rule, okay. Once an acceptance is posted, it becomes effective. That means that a contract is formed. Since then, right. So that now we are back to the default rule. Remember, the default rule is what? The default rule is you know the receipt rule. Uh, let's have a let, have, let me have a look at the the, the time now. I mean, the, okay, fine. Right now, the, the second part of the lecture has been the, for about been the 50, 50 something minutes. Fine, okay. We are going to just I mean, end this second part of the lecture in about, I think that about I mean, 15 the, or 20 minutes time, okay. Again, back to the default rule. Okay, again, this default rule, the receipt rule, applies to both okay both and it's mode of communication and a non instantaneous mode of communication okay look at the example here you may wonder okay why english law adheres to you know the receipt rule as the default rule it is felt by english law that well this is fair the rationale is this okay the contract, a contract is formed by what? By the meeting of the minds, of course. Okay, so the meeting of the minds is constituted when an acceptance is received. This is something fair. Okay, this is what is, 
this is the way in which you know that this is felt in the in the England. Okay, so the as I have mentioned, this default rule applies to an internet mode of communication and also a non-internet mode of communication. Okay, look at the example here with respect to an incident. An incident, sorry, an incident is mode of communication, okay? We have A and B here. Let's say that they are face-to-face. -face. So when they are face-to-face, -face, or even when they are, you know, not face-to-face, -face, but they are, you know, they are chatting over the phone. Right. So, you know, when they are chatting over the phone, you know, it is the same thing as being face-to-face. -face. In this case, A makes an offer to sell to sell to his car to B, we have an offer from A, and B, who is still face-to-face -face, or who is still on the phone, B accepts A's offer, in this case, the rule is what? The acceptance is effective, the acceptance is considered by law as being communicated to the other party and being effective when it is received by the other party. So, when B makes an acceptance, okay, the acceptance made by B is heard by A. A can hear it. A can hear B's acceptance in this case. So the act of hearing, okay, the fact that B hears A's ex B, sorry, the, the fact that in this case, mean A makes an offer and B accepts say offer, and let's support that. You know, B acceptance is hit by A. The fact that the fact that A hears what is said by B, that means that you know B's acceptance is received by A. So that there is a contract between A and B here. We have a contract between A and B. A contract is formed between A and B when uh, A hears. When A hears the acceptance made by B, that means that the acceptance made by B is duly received by A, so that there is a contract. Okay. The receipt rule, the default rule, i.e. the receipt rule, also apply to a non internet mode of communication. Okay. Supposing that we again have A and B, in this case, A write a message to B. A write a message to make an offer to sell his car to B. Let's go that. A asks C. He asks C at the time C is about to go to C B. So A asks C to carry this letter to and hand over this letter to B. And C does so. C just carries, you know, A's letter. And then, you know, the hands this letter over to B. And after B receives A's letter, of course, through C, right, B wants to accept C offer. In this case, he write it. B just writes the message saying that he wants to accept A's offer. And B asks C to carry this letter back to A. And C does so when C hands B's message to A. That means that the acceptance made by B, correct, is received by whom? By A. B's letters is received by A so that the acceptance has been effective because it has been received by the other party. So we have a contract, okay? We have a contract between A and B. Right now, coming to the except, coming to the exception. Remember, even though English law, okay, the English law results or adheres to the the receipt rule, which is the default rule, okay. But the exception is that in the case where an exception is made by post, then in this case the postal rule will apply. An acceptance will be effective once it is posted. So this means that this is the what? This is the this pass rule, the rule which is adopted in the in the case of you know the 
communication of the acceptance by Perth, it is the it is the what this past row be in this case the acceptance will be effective once it is posted. One it is just posted, okay? Even though you know the lecture is lost, it does not matter. The acceptance is effective once it is posted so that there is a contract at the moment at which that letter is posted. Well, this rule of law has been established for a very long time, since 1818, in the case known as Adams and Linsell. You may say, well, it's very old, you know, 1818. Why do we need to make mention of the case which is very, very old? Nothing is old. This case is still good law. Do you, uh, do, have you come across with this impression? This is still good law. When, the, when we say this is still good law, you may read textbook and the textbook says that this is still good law. Adams and Linsell, this case is still good law. That means that this is still the law which, you know, which applies now. This rule of law has not been changed. It has not been superseded by any later cases so that we can still, okay, we have to just adhere to this case as authority, okay? So in this case, what happened is that, okay, what happened is the communication between the seller and the buyer, A and B, I try to just change, you know, the, the language into A and B in order for in order to just mean that in, in, uh, in order for you to understand this one much better, okay? A send a letter to B. A does make an offer to sell wool to B. Okay, so, so in this case, A made an offer to sell wool to B. And A requested the B to reply in the course of post, that's me that A told me that if B wanted to reply, okay, B would have to, to do so by post, sending letter to A, and B did so. In this case, the thing is that, you know, A just misaddressed the letter. He mis misaddressed this letter, he put something wrong, okay, with respect to B's address, so that the letter as sent by A reached B quite, you know, late. You know, the, the, but eventually, the letter sent by A, you know, was received by B, even though, even though, even though it was received late. Right. On the same day, on the, on the day when the letter was received by B, okay, B replied immediately, B just posted the lecture, a lecture, saying that, okay, fine, B, oh, B was willing to accept a software. The lectures was sent on the same day, the acceptance was sent on the same day as the day on which a lecture was received by B, okay. At that time, you know, A, you know, A thought that B was not inter interested in buying, you know, because you know, A just, you know, the, uh, A just draw the address, A draw B's address wrongly, okay? He just misaddressed the letter. So the letter was received by B late. So the, you know, the, when the, a few days, when the, when the several days passed without having any reply from B, A thought that B did not show any interest in buying uh, uh, the wool from A. So A sold the wool to somebody else. In that case, even though A did not know at all about you know the B's acceptance, when A sold wool to C, it was in, it was contended that A was in breach of contract. When there was a, when there was a contention that A was in breach of a contract, just mean that B believed that. There had been a contract between A and B. The question which we have to think about is whether or not there was a contract between A and B. In this case, B, of course, made an acceptance. And it was made by Perst. The court here that, well, in this case, once except one the acceptance was posted. Okay. One it was posted, 
then it became effective, okay? Hence the post rule. As soon as an exception is posted, it will become effective, okay? So, you know, this is the rule in English common law. Okay, so the, again, we are going to just mean the, the summarize that in, in English law, there is no such, you know, uh, there is no such classification uh, of communications into a an intensement and a non intensement okay? English law result to a default rule, i.e. the receipt rule. The receipt rule, this is the default rule, except that in the case where, okay, an exception is made by purse, then the postal rule will just apply. Okay, on the authority of Adams and Linsell, which is still good law up to now. You may wonder, well, why so? What is the rationale of, you know, the, of holding that, okay, an acceptance which is made by purse is effective once it is posted. Even though the lecture is lost, it doesn't matter. Even though the lecture is lost, the acceptance becomes effective as soon as it is posted. So the contract is formed at that moment. A contract is formed at the moment at which an acceptance is posted. Then there is the there is uh, the poss possibility that you know the a contract is formed even though the offer rule does not have the knowledge of the acceptance at all, simply because the acceptance is lost in the Royal Mail service. Yes, fine, that is possible. Okay. The reason why English law takes the view that okay, an acceptance which is made by purse is effective once it is posted is this. Everybody in those days, you know, use the mail, royal mail service like this. Everyone in England, okay, would use this royal mail service because in those days, there were no services like, you know, the, the internet service. There, there was nothing... Uh, there was nothing like what, like you know, the like uh, the uh, email or modern means of communication, so that everybody seemed to you know communicate by post, by the royal mail service. Okay, so when people use the royal mail service, they are taken to have designated or to have nominated the royal mail service as their own agent. Okay, so okay. The mail service or the post office is, in a way, is nominated as an implication of all parties. So you know when a, you know the, when a uses the mail service, a is uh, regarded as having nominated the the royal mail or the post office as his implied agent. Similarly, b. Okay, when B uses the Royal Service, B has impliedly appointed or you know the nominated the Royal Service as his own agent. So you know when the, you know when let's say that when A posts when A posts this lecture in the you know the post box like this, right? The lecture here, let's go that this is the acceptance. This is an acceptance. When this lecture, which contains acceptance, is posted, it is in the hands of the post office. And given that the post office is the agent, okay, it's an implied agent of, you know, of everybody, of A and B, that means that this lecture, once it is posted, it is in the hands of the post office and it is also in the hands of B, because the post office acts as B's employee's agent. So once this letter is posted, it is regarded by law as having been in B's hands. Okay? So that even though the letter is lost, it doesn't matter. What is sent is the acceptance. The acceptance is posted. Once it is posted, it is effective so that the contract is formed at this moment. It be separate entry because B does not know about you know this acceptance and B may sell the goods to somebody else and then B is in breach of contract 
if B is sued by A in this case, of course, B suffers some injury, B will have to have recourse against, you know, uh, against a person liable. B may sue the post office if the loss of this lecture is due to the fault of the post office or if the loss of this lecture is due to the fault of somebody else, then B will have to have recourse against that person, not against A. Okay, so this is the, the you know the rationale the uh, behind English law. Okay, now, advice, advice, and advice other countries. Okay, from Tom to Tom, yeah, we witness we have witnessed you know the emergence of new devices or new technologies. So, given that there are two rules applied by English law, remember two rules are what. The first one is the receipt rule, the default rule, and the second one is the postal rule. Right. The question which arises is that is this okay? When we deal with you know modern devices, when we deal with new devices, then which rules, which rule applies between the receipt rule, the default rule, okay, and the postal rule? In the old days, yeah. of course, I mean, the, the, there were no, uh, you know, no such devices as what, as, uh, as what, as uh, uh, Instagram, as an email, as Facebook Messenger, whatever, okay? So, at that time, about in 1960-something, okay, the English courts would have to decide cases involving the use of telex, telex, that, okay, in about... 1960 something, okay? So we had, at the time, you know, the English courts had cases, in fact, I mean, the many, many cases involving the use of telex. A and B communicate, communicated by telex machines like this. Of course, it looked very old. Now, you know, the, the use of telex seemed to be obsolete. Yeah, right. Uh, so the, in those days, this kind of machine was in use, right? So, communication by text like this would have to be, you know, would have to be regarded by the court, would have to be what, would have to be considered by the court as to whether or not, okay, it would be subject to the receipt rule or the postal rule, and the, the very, one of the, the early cases is this, Okay, the interest and my spirist. Okay, in this case, okay, the court here that, well, communication by text would be treated in the same way as communication by what? Communication by telephone, so that it would be subject to the default rule, i.e. the receipt rule, so the message sent by telex would be effective it would be regarded by law as duly communicated to the other party when it was received by the other party. An acceptance which was sent by Telex would be effective when it was received by the offer rule. Okay, both when the Lord Justice Parker and uh, Lord Justice Denning in this case share the same opinion. Okay, if you are interested in this case, you are welcome to have a look at, you know, the judicial speeches. Right. You may wonder why. At the time when this case was decided, the courts did not seem to elaborate upon the reason, okay? But the reason came to, I mean, the reason uh, came about in the, a new, a newer case, Renkeburn and Starhack, in the, you know, the 19, the, in 1983. The 1983, the, the previous case, I mean the, the previous case uh, was reported in what, in something like nine, 19 what, I mean the, 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 the previous case I can't remember, okay, but the, t the use of telex occurred in about 1960 something, okay. So in the later case in Brinkman and Starhack, the court seemed to give reasons for holding that. 
you know, ex an acceptance, uh, you know, the acceptance made by Chelix would be would be effective okay, when it was received by the other party. The court seemed to think this way, the court think that, well, you know, when we, when we use telex, it is the way of communication in which the one who sent the message is in a position to know, he is in a position to tell if the message has been received on the other party's machine. That means that, you know, when A sends a message, when A sends a message to B using this Telex machine, A is in the position to tell whether or not the message as sent by him okay. is received by the other party. Because I mean, if the message encounters some problem, if the message is not received by the others, the other party, the machine of the sender will, I mean, uh, will normally tell something. The machine may just mean that, you know, uh, may may just mean to have the message saying that well, there is some there is some problem, there is some technical error, something like that. So in this case, A will be in the position to know whether or not the message has gone through the other side. So that A should should have the duty, the sender should have the duty to ensure that the message is received by the other party, okay? So in this case, the, you know, the English law, in, English courts they have taken the view that in the case where an acceptance is made by Chelix, it will be effective, it will be regarded as having been communicated to the other party and become uh, and uh, and uh, having become effective when what when it is received by the other party, okay. So I think that means you are clear about English law position, okay? Positions in English law. If we try to compare between the positions of Thai law and the positions of English law, okay, we can see that in uh, in the, in Thailand we have you know the, the we have the distinction between the two modes. A non intense mode and a an intense mode with respect to a non intense mode, then you know the degradation of intention will be effective when it reaches the other party, i.e., when it, it is received uh, by the other party. But in the case of you know the, the degradation of intention in a in an intense mode, it will become effective when it is known to the other party. So this is the perception rule. If we compare between Thai law and English law on this point, we can see that, okay, Thai law has the distinction between a non tennis mode of communication and an tennis mode of communication, okay, with respect to a non tennis mode of communication. The degradation of intention will be effective when it is, okay, when it is, received by the other party. So the rule uh, here, it is the received rule, but in the case of an incident mode of communication, in the case of an incident mode of communication, okay, the rule is the persistent rule under which, according to which, okay, a communication, a declaration of intention becomes effective when the other party has the knowledge of it, okay. But in English law, there is no such, you know, the distinction, okay, there is no such distinction between two modes. In English law, the default rule is the received rule, except in the case where an acceptance is made by first. So in this case, okay, when acceptance is made by first, the acceptance will be effected when it is posted. When I say that it is made by purse, that means that it is it is made by the Roman service, okay? If you ask somebody to carry your lecture, if A want to make the acceptance, okay? If A want to accept this offer, and A asks somebody to carry a lecture, that is not the communication by purse, that is Okay, that is subject to the default rule, i.e. the receipt rule, okay. By post here, it means, you know, by the, the 
Louis Mills service. You know, so that, you know, they, you know, so that, I mean, we have also witnessed, you know, uh, uh, thought of, you know, the, the companies who, that run business or carrying, uh, carrying the, carrying lectures or carrying parcels. So in this case, in this case, it might not be considered as, you know, communication by curse in the eyes of English law, okay? So if somebody just make acceptance when through that service, the del delivery service, okay, the not by the Roy, Roy Mill service, that may be subject to what? Just the receipt rule, the default rule, not the postal rule, okay? So that's it for today. I think that you are clear, okay? We have talked about terms of effectiveness of the, the creation of an intention, okay? So we know the both Thai laws and English law. I think that means you have uh, now clear understanding about this, okay? So the, it's enough for today, okay? So that is enough for today. Uh, uh, we are going to uh, move on the next topic I mean, the next uh, next time. Okay, so today, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, and uh, good luck. Uh, have a good day. See you uh, next week. Thank you.